Hello, this is a tutorial from Shubbubba1026. Today I'm going to be doing a snap grid based movement tutorial. So, like a Final Fantasy game. Um, I'm using Game Maker 8 Pro, but you do not need it. You just need a very basic uh, version of Game Maker, like always. So, first thing you need, you need a sprite called S Player. Needs to have four images and zero is facing up. Image one is facing right, two is facing down, three is facing left. And my, I'm going to be using 32 by 32 sprites, but you do not need that. Uh, try. You should definitely make your wall sprite the same size as your player. Okay. So I have a full square here as my wall. Fill in your wall as full sprite. So you need an object called O player. Put it as a player sprite. Also make an O wall. Have it as the wall sprite. Also click solid. Now if your player sprite doesn't take up the full image, like mine takes up the full image so I don't need to do this, but if yours isn't if yours isn't a complete square, then your mask should be S wall. That'll help a lot with the collisions. Okay, so the first thing you do is you do keyboard left. Now before we start, I'm not gonna be using any code in this whatsoever because I have no clue how to check grid in code. I have no clue at all. So, yeah, if, if you're a non-code user, I mean, if you're a non-drag-and-drop uh, user, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be using any code in this, because I do not know how to. If you know how to use code for grid checking, please tell me. I, I, I just tried before this tutorial to try to find it. I had no luck. Anyways, so, keyboard check left. Go to the control tab, and do this grid check. Now, whatever this is, whatever your player sprite is, that's what you want the snap to be at. So mine is 32, so I'm going to put 32 by 32. So it checks if it's aligned with the grid. And then put move, go back to the move tab, click this first one in the top left corner, put it in between those brackets, put move left at a speed of 4. Now, it's important of whatever your speed is, because it's... It, you want it to line up with my. With, you want it to line up with your. Um, you want it to be. Uh, so let, let, it's kind of hard to explain. My player sprite is 32 by 32. So 32 by 32 is divisible by four to get a whole number. So uh, that's what. That's what. Um. That's what you want. You want it to. You want your. Your sprite to be able to be uh, divisible by this this number and not get a decimal or a fraction. So if I put 5, that wouldn't be a very good number to put in. That would be a pretty bad number. And if I put 3, that would that wouldn't work either. But if I put 2 it would it would work, but he'd just go really slow. I could put 8. I could also put um no, I couldn't I couldn't put no, I couldn't put that. But yeah, I could put 8. That's just double but go too fast for me. So I'm going to put 4. That's a pretty good number. Put that in between the brackets. So then also put sprite index equals your player sprite sub image, no, speed equals 0. Sub image equals 3. Because our I know our player sprite going left is sub image 3. So we're going to put that. And then basically just duplicate that. But in the first, we're going to put um, chain sprite into sprite player. And some Im sub image 0. No, 2. Because that's our down facing one. We want it to be facing down when you first start out. And a speed of 0. So he doesn't, you know, start moving around real quick. It looks like, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't look like he's spinning. Duplicate this event with right. 
and then just change the direction that they move to whatever you know this is right so I make them go right and then change the sub image so that it's uh, one because that is our right facing sub image duplicate this keyboard trick up start moving up and zero that is our up facing duplicate that and down and that's the same and make them go down and change this to two there that should that should be oh no one more thing keyboard no key so if you're not pressing any of those buttons check if it's aligned to the grid and if it is aligned to the grid then stop moving now if we put this in the game right now oh yeah when you're put it placing your objects excuse me and when you're placing your objects in the game put your snap to whatever the oops to whatever your um sprites are. So mine's 32 by 32. Put that in. That's very, very important. So here's our player. And let's play this to see if moving and spriting works. Yay! So it does work. And it's a very good program too. If you press a million a million buttons at the same time, it's not going to get off or anything. You'll still be able to do this. So if you hold down a button, it doesn't stop on the grid. It keeps on moving. And then the instant let you let go and it's aligned to a grid, it stops moving. So that works. But now we need our very simple, very, very, very simple collision with the wall. It's collision with the wall. If aligned to a grid, then stop moving. Yeah, you can do anything in here. Uh, very, really good programs here. But you know, again, it, it's drag and drop, so it's kind of easy to make. Yep. No problems with collisions at all. Okay, well, I guess that's about it. Yep, pretty simple. Uh, the only problem you might have if you're trying to put this in another game is if your uh, your your person like walks or something. Uh, that wouldn't be that hard to change. Um, instead of the changing the sub image, just change the sprite to whatever your up and down is. Uh, and then just if you have any other problems, you you should be able to fix it yourself because it's, it's basically different for everybody. But yeah, that's about it for uh, how to do grid. Uh, if I find out how to do it in code, I'll post up another one, another video saying how to do it in code if I find out later, because it does take up more file space using drag and drop. So when it loads, it takes longer. Well, I guess that's about it. I guess I'll see you guys next time.